Hello, Project Runway fans. Uh, the stitches are back. Uh, Daniel Montgomery, senior editor for Gold Derby, here with uh, my fellow senior editor, Susan Wazina, here to talk about the latest Project Runway episode titled The Stitch Is Back. Um, a pun, of course, on Delton John's song titled The Bitch Is Back, which is which was this week's theme. Uh, uh, the, uh, the designers, the final eight, had to create looks inspired by sort of Elton John. They had to make performance looks inspired by Elton John, the new movie Rocket Man coming out. Uh, so they had to not only capture Elton John, but Elton John in the era of like the 1970s and 80s, um, which... On, which meant a menswear challenge, uh, and it meant male models, and we will get to that. Because <laughs> there was a lot going on with that in this episode. Um, and uh, but, but first of all, one, I love the men wear, menswear challenges, and not just because of male models, but because it's fun to watch the show and get to imagine myself in the clothes, which I usually can't do. Um, I mean, I, I suppose I could wear like one of those long ball gowns and, and really channel my inner Billy Porter at the Oscars. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the men's wear uh, challenges are still uh, more my alley. Uh, but eliminated, let's talk about that first, get right to the, wait, wait, right wait, to the business. One, okay. One, okay. One note. Swatch made an appearance. Oh, did he? I missed, I missed him. And it was like a full body appearance, not just his butt this time. <laughs> And somebody was petting him, but it was went so fast that I didn't notice which designer was being kind to him. But yes, he got a full on cameo for once. Well, fantastic. Swatch watch has ended at right. last. <laughs> Found Swatch. It's so it's such a relief to know he's okay and he hasn't. You know, hasn't I bet it's the last time they'll happen, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, well, getting right into the nitty gritty of the episode, the elimination. Let's talk about that. Uh, Leela Orr was sent home, which once they announced who the bottom three was, uh, I'm not surprised by. And you know, as everything was coming down the runway on first look, like I couldn't really tell how good they were because they were all insane and some of the insane I liked better than others mm -hmm. um I will say this is probably my favorite runway of the season just in terms of well because it was a real on. you know you could define it you you had the costumes from the movie right there if you didn't do what that was I, pretty much you were on the wrong path and not on the yellow brick road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I loved at the beginning of the episode, they have like the little yellow brick road stickers on the pavement. Yeah. You know, they can't even afford like a whole yellow brick road thing. Right, uh, just a few here and there, yeah. But if they hadn't, if they didn't have like the little mannequins outside, I would have thought like, ooh, Wizard of Oz challenge. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, but Leela, uh, upon closer inspection, when she got her critiques and I was looking at her look, I didn't love her look coming down the runway in the first yeah, place. I didn't get the chaps. They they weren't sexy at all. If you they know, weren't, yeah, they just had like weird cutouts on the side, and they were covered by the jacket most of the time. Yeah, so they, it's they like I don't know what she was saying. And the jacket was so big, and I love that Nina made the guy take it off because it was hot in there. So. Yeah, and, and it just my biggest problem with it coming down the runway was that it was just kind of underwhelming. Like there, it it was. It was crazy without actually being that interesting. Like it, it just had fringe and it was blue and it it didn't look particularly exciting. Yeah. Uh, so and and the fact that she hasn't had very much success, she had maybe one or two high scores this season. Never won a challenge. A couple of low scores already. So I figured once she was in the bottom three, I had a feeling they were sending her out. I knew yeah. they weren't sending out Tessa, and I'm mad that they put Tessa in the bottom three. I thought she had a good look. Um, <clears throat> but it wasn't. It needed some bigness. It needed some bigness. That would but be business attire for Elton John. <laughs> but Hester, has, honestly, Hester had like one. It was a tur. It, it was it was a turkey costume. Right. Like it looked like it looked like a Halloween slash Thanksgiving. I think costume that you had at Party that. City. It was uh, fun. It was silly. It was crazy. I enjoyed it, but it, uh, it, no, it, it no, wasn't it a was not though. big enough. It was. For her, it was tasteful for this challenge. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we don't want tasteful from Hester at the Elton John challenge. No, bring COVID, out the, the COVID and her, not a good team. 
Not really, but I mean, that we didn't really get that much of them together. Like, I think I mean, like, forever. I mean, she could have made a better thing because yes. this would this isn't her wheel, her crazy wheel. Yeah, this is exactly what should have right up her alley. I agree with the pasties on this week. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I still think the pasties <laughs> leave the pasties in the drawer. Um, but yeah, I do think COVID, as much as I love COVID, I wish COVID had at least had more screen time, but I think he was so busy trying to make the jacket. He probably didn't do or say much that was really fun or exciting. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it was, you know, as soon as they said, you know, oh, you know, COVID, I can work fast and I know how to make a jacket really fast. I was like thinking he has not done anything really fast when he was on this show. He was always like scrambling last he minute. Wasn't looking. Yeah. yeah. She so. chose the room. But, uh, yeah, bringing back the uh, former <laughs> people, that was more tension than what they were making, I think, for some a, of them. A little bit. Um, it was both more and less. I thought, you know, you bring back eight designers who have been eliminated to help the eight designers who are still around. I feel like there's a potential for, like, a lot of conflict in the workroom. So I, I think the fact that there were only, like, two or three little dust-ups were... Uh, or it was kind of a relief. I, I'm glad it didn't turn out to like I shouldn't have been eliminated that week. You should have been. Why are you still here? And I'm you know, yeah. I thought that was going to be the whole episode, especially with you know some of the designers who have let's say bigger personalities, like Kavanaugh and Nadine. Nadine was getting a little bit testy at the beginning, saying I'm not really happy to be back, but whatever. Um, so I thought she was going to be throwing kind of you know shade everywhere and hissy fits and complaining and and disparaging. Um, but she was fine for the most part, like, you know, a couple of couple of little snippy moments, but nothing dramatic, really. And, you know, I guess, you know, when the pressure is off for these people, like they're not here to win. They're here to help and see these people who they got to know yeah. for a while. So they, they can relax a little bit. Yeah. Sonia, I mean, it was teased up in the promos that Sonia yeah. would have a, a, a conflict with Garrow Sparrow. Um, but I'm I'm a little surprised by it as it was happening. I'm like thinking... You know, she was upset that Garrow didn't give her enough credit while yeah. he was getting his critiques. Garrow was the only one who me even mentioned his helper during right. his critique. Right. So I don't know why, unless they edited out some other parts where the others were gushing about, like, oh, you know, my assistant did this and that. I don't know, we worked together on that. Like, so I don't know why, like, she, I didn't hear anyone else's name, you know, helper name called out saying like, oh, I'd like to thank this person for doing this for me. Uh, so I don't know why she was so offended personally. Well, the other thing that stood out for me, not a contestant, but Brandon's, you know, this fixation on poor Tessa's not doing hems. I mean, and it looked like everything that was like, it up, wasn't it? like any portion of the clothing that was a hem or a sleeve or something, none, they all had the little threadies hanging out. So at some point, and it could be next week, and there's only two women standing now, and one of them's Esther, so, you know, she's, he's just going to, you know, say to her, either learn how to sew a hem or, or just don't bother. <laughs> well, the interesting thing, I don't think the judges have really called her out for that much that I can remember. Uh, it was did. really mainly the he other did. days. Recently, he's been starting to do that, and, like, she acts like it's her signature look or something, which is next week's um, <laughs> uh, challenge, I think. But so it could be all like unhemmed, like that would be her signature look. <laughs> yeah, but like, I, I, it's weird that they ding some people for things and not others. Um, yeah. Like, cause like this week they got through with like raving about how good Jamal's look was with again, the Muppet feathers with yeah. the zebra body sock in it. Um, uh, which I wasn't a huge fan of, but I liked it a little bit better when I got to when they started discussing it, and I could see how how well crafted it was, even if I didn't get the look. Um, but then they go straight to Venny and say, "Oh, you with the feathers." I'm like, he is standing next to a guy who did feathers, and like justify right. why you're getting on his case for feathers and not. Well, Venny, he knows his problem. He does five things too much, and I'm sorry. Why are you making your model, you know, in platform shoes, nearly kill himself with these 
really not attractive or useful. Yeah. Dragging behind him from his pants. I mean, that did not, pant trains, you know, it's not going to happen. Yeah. I actually <laughs> liked the idea of it. I think someone did that this past season on Project One Way All Stars, and it worked out a lot better. Um, it might have been like an avant garde challenge or something a little yeah. bit more fitting for, for something that weird. Um, but I think the problem was the combination. One, the the giant shoes, it's like they're going to have like a, a, a Sonia moment from like the unconventional challenge where they're going to trip over this stuff right. because they can't walk in it. Um, so I think the shoes, plus the fact that it was like, it was just like a regular almost cuff and then it just had extra fabric in the back. Like it didn't look like it flowed naturally. So like maybe if the front of the pant had been there had been a slit or like, you know, a carve out or something for the model's legs to move and have the train flow backwards or something. But like, it, yeah, just, it just was just kind of sitting there. It didn't, it didn't function and it didn't look that like the effect it was going for wasn't really there. Yeah. Well, Bishne is coming into his own here and I did like that. And yeah, that was a good fit on the butt. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the can learn something from him. From yeah, that was the best. Look, that was my favorite look of the of the night. And it was the runner up look. Garrow Sparrow won the challenge. And I was happy that Garrow Sparrow won the challenge. I thought the top two were exactly right. right. Um, and I was glad Garrow Sparrow won because it's his first challenge win. And I think he's deserved it a couple of times before when he hasn't gotten it. Mm -hmm. um, so I was happy to see him win. But Bishmay's look, it was the first out on the runway. I looked at this thing and I'm like, that look, the model looked like Taryn Edgerton playing Elton John in Rocket Man. It, right. it, it, it looked so perfect. It was wild, it was crazy, but it was controlled and it, it felt intentional and specific. It, and then when he took off the jacket and you could see the detail underneath, I'm like, that looks so Elton John. It's just, it's yeah. absolutely the but right it was look. fitted so well too. I mean, on the model, I mean, it was the best fitting outfit yeah because i couldn't tell what garrow's <laughs> fit was because there's so many you know layers to it and but you know do you think he did all that crystal work right mm -hmm. i mean renee i don't i didn't see her with a glue gun well I, I didn't see him either somehow those crystals got on there but she didn't claim any oh sonia 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 yeah um, yeah, I don't, like, I didn't notice who, like, you know, who, I didn't notice, like, if Sonia came up with the, uh, the, the, you know, jock strap idea thing. <laughs> um, I think they were, he was talking about it, but I don't know. Yeah, I, it, it was, um, uh, it, the division of labor, it seemed like the division of labor was different on that team in the sense that Garrow is like, please give me less input and I want. Right. <laughs> instead of, you know, asking for input and, and her doing half the design or something. She was mm -hmm. like, I know what I'm doing. I just want you your help with what you're good at and what I, you know, I know you're good at and we can work on this together, but he's the captain of the ship because he's the contestant being judged. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, do, I, 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 I still think Sonia's griping was a little bit unfair unless there was something drastic on the cutting room floor that would have well she, she's obviously it. bitter that you know she's not in the game anymore <laughs> honestly i she has a right to be i don't think she yeah. should have been eliminated no, that no, week she for her was not floor. the one who should have gone home it was jamal and he was safe boom mm -hmm. yeah and and hester who had the pasty <laughs> that yeah. week yeah yeah um you know speaking of butts though um but <laughs> let's let, let's talk about um you know the, the the whole male model thing i always go into these you know male model challenges thinking why don't they do more male uh you know menswear challenges mm -hmm. and then i watch all the designers just kind of their tongues fall out when looking yes. at all these male models i'm like oh that's why they don't do male uh menswear uh challenges more often one because no one will be able to finish their work they'll be too distracted and two because one of these models is going to go to HR and complain about sexual harassment. That's <laughs> right. This well, was like I an hour and a half Me Too moment. <laughs> they were playing that up. They were. Uh, a lot. On and, and, camera. 
and they were they wasn't were, as bad as all that. You know, yeah. they weren't wolf whistling. You know, no, they, no, they they were professional to the models themselves. But then afterwards, it's like your model smelled good. And I was like, really, Tessa? <laughs> well, look, Hester. I don't know any other the women are gay, but she wasn't drooling over her models. You know, she was free for the restraint. Yeah, it wasn't doing anything for her. No. <laughs> no. And honestly, I, I, I can understand where they were coming from, but also it's just like, oh, it's, it's like they've never seen men before. It's like they've been on this island of, uh, you know, of, of like this sexless island with uh, only women and gay men. And it's just right. like, oh, <laughs> boys, boys. <laughs> <laughs> But um, no, they they were all good sports. I feel bad for the one with the mohawk with the glitter. That that's not a look anyone should try. I I don't think glitter it it, it kind of fights each part of that look. <laughs> yeah. Well, that look was fighting each part of itself. Um, right. I think the glitter mohawk was probably the best part. <laughs> all right, <laughs> you can try that when your hair gets longer. <laughs> Oh no, my hair just curls up on itself, you know. Oh, okay. Although I wouldn't mind, you know, if I, I would be a model on Project. Yeah, I, I, I was about to say I, I would be a model on Project Runway just so they could take me and, and give me all those, you know, product placement. Now we'll use this Tresemme foam and you know, all this sort of stuff. And I'm like, yes, please do. I want to see how that looks. So this week when she had the um concealer or whatever, I guess it's Maybelline, right? That they're using. I don't know, maybe he's born with it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh i wanted to look online while i was watching the show to see what product it was i was kind of wondering that too because they're like oh this concealer is good for men too and i was thinking go on <laughs> yeah yeah we all need a little help when we don't sleep it <laughs> but um no this was uh, like you said i think they all were in better moods and even Nadine, once they got some liquor in her, she was kind of, <laughs> <laughs> it was a good idea to get drinks, you know? Yeah, that's the secret of Project Run. Just liquor them up, they'll be fine. Yeah. But who's going to win at this point? I don't know. I, 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 it just can't. She's just, it's, I don't know. I don't see the judges, like, I feel like Hester is the kind of person who would put together a very cohesive, very clearly, you know, a clear voiced yeah. collection. I don't think it's going to be, I think it's going to be when she has like, I don't know, eight or 10 looks coming down the runway. I think whatever she puts on, half of it's going to be too divisive. Um, like she's not going to be able to put out 10 looks that everyone can agree on. That's great. That's great. That's great. That's great. Well, um, she I think has potential. Yeah, when she has immunity, it's not good, but she can't have it anymore. So yeah, she can't have it anymore. Toe the line a little better. <laughs> <laughs> I think her Thanksgiving turkey should have. I, I I preferred Tessa's look. Um, you know, it, it was even more dramatic than the turkey look. The turkey look was just like chest up. It's just like turkey feathers in the beak, and it's like well, oh my goodness, it's like a Thanksgiving yeah. costume. But when you like party city. Well, she's just trying to be too tasteful when the she's not meeting the challenge, Tessa. Yeah. When you're you're allowed to be outrageous, you don't have to be totally outrageous. Just one thing, and that was just a little too sedate for. Yeah, I I think it would have been. I think the one decision that she could have made that made, would have made the judges like it more that would have just been a different color choice or a color choice because it was all neutral. Um, yeah. Yeah, and they they do for that. Yeah. I also think I, I thought, you know, going into this, I thought like she's a minimalist designer. This is the opposite of what she's comfortable right. doing. So like what she put on the runway is Tessa designing at the top of her lungs. Like that is her loud screaming, oh my God, look. Uh, you know, I, I don't know, you know, it's not her wheelhouse, it's not her her skill set or her style. So the fact I, I honestly I thought that look was good for the challenge. I could imagine Elton John in it. May, again, maybe more of like business casual Elton John yeah. <laughs> than full blown performance Elton John. But I think it fit the challenge well enough that she shouldn't have been in the she shouldn't have been in the bottom three at least. Like you know, let, let her be safe. Like if not in the top. Well, I do like that fashion designer. He also did a Bohemian Rhapsody, and he 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 did that lizard coat, which I know you would wear. 
<laughs> Probably, yeah. The angry lizard. <laughs> but, oh, that was another thing that annoyed me was that it's the Elton John challenge and you have the judges judging the Elton John challenge and you get the costume designer from Rocket Man and Brandon Maxwell wearing like black, basic black. Yeah. And I was like thinking, come on, this is not the Johnny Cash challenge. This is the Elton John challenge. Throw on a little color, you know, get in the get in the spirit, you know. I Carly wore the suit with the rhinestones and, you know, Elaine was blinged out. The guys could have. Curly had a little Curly had it. all the sparkle going on. I think she bought it all up and Brandon was left with nothing. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, she bought out all the rhinestones stones yeah. from that bling store that they shopped in. Yeah, weekend. that was a scary store. Some people could die in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tessa was going to have a full-blown panic attack in there. I so know. She was shiny. Like, I don't know what to do with shiny. Get, get away from me. Anyway, I have no idea now who's going to win this. Yeah, year. it's it's hard to say. I still, I, I still think Sebastian, week in, week out, is great like honestly i think the only time he had a misstep and he was still safe for it was uh the aladdin look in the uh yeah. and it yeah. wasn't the worst thing in the world it just yeah. sort of the worst thing in the world yeah it was not good but by badness standards it wasn't that bad and you know all these other weeks i'm a little worried for him because all these other weeks that i thought oh this is an amazing look this is a winning look he's safe and he's not even in the top yeah. three so I'm like, why aren't the judges who were so like high on him early in the season, he could, right. he could do no wrong. Now he's doing these amazing looks week after week, two weeks, the last two weeks in a row, I think he should have won right. if he wasn't in the top three. Yeah. Um, and this week, I think he would have been worthy of the top three with, with that look. And he didn't have any idea what he was doing. And he still managed to do this really outstanding angel winged look that yeah. felt really, really fitting. Yeah. Um, so I think he could win, but somehow he's not connecting with the judges lately in a way that worries me. But um, I, I, honestly, I think uh, based on everyone's work this season so far, he's the best of the best right now. Well, can we give a shout out to Kavanaugh? Because I think she redeemed herself. Yes, Don't absolutely. Because and she, she was, yeah. Okay, she was a little bit like, oh, I, I am the best person for you because I've designed costumes for entertainers. But, you know, she, you know, fulfilled that promise because I think he needed her because he didn't know who really Elton John was. Yeah. So. <laughs> and I think she was, she was a really good sport. And I think it was, um, I was a little worried at the beginning when everyone was picking their designers and I knew she was going to get picked last, Right. And, but it's understandable that she was picked last, not because she was unpopular, but because, because she was eliminated in the first week, that just means the other designers didn't get a chance to know her that well personally or right. her skill set. So, like they picked, they went with designers they knew a little bit better, and they they knew what they could get from them in terms of their mm -hmm. work output. Um, so, but she, you know, even then she wasn't like you know, you know, oh, I'm picked last. She, she, you know, noticed it, but she, she, she was, yeah, she, she was, was a pro. Yeah, I wonder if, if they'd given her another shot after that first week and eliminated Frankie first instead. I really, I'm really interested if to to know if he, you know, Kavanaugh really would have grown and done really well. Um, I think she really had that potential. And, she has and, a website or something. I mean, way back then when I was looking at her clothes, they they were nice, you know, and yeah, and Renee got screwed too. So I I'm not going to say they're anti anti woman, but yeah, I do think, um, you know, the men are definitely getting more. <laughs> good. Yeah. Well, as, as, and it's weird how, you know, you know, these female designers get the boot when they shouldn't. And on the flip side of that, Hester has won these challenges when we thought she shouldn't. Right. So it's, it's, it's like this weird imbalance. It's like well, why that, has Hester risen to the top relative to everyone else? Well, next week they have to design for themselves a signature look. That will be interesting. That will be fun. It'll, it'll, you know, the the premise is sort of that. How do you measure yourself and fit yourself? <laughs> Honestly, I assume most of these designers have at least designed something for themselves. Like, yeah. I, I couldn't imagine if I were a designer not making something that I could wear or would wear. Yeah. Um, so I think they'll be okay with that. It'll be interesting because it, it'll be not just like their signature, but like a statement piece, like a political statement or like a mission statement or something, a cause they believe in. 
Um, and they have to make a design around that, which I think is going to be interesting. I'm a little sad to see Leela gone now because she was all about like eco-friendly uh, yeah. fashion. And so she would have had a very specific point of view that would have been interesting. Um, I mean, whether or not it would have been good, but it would have at least uh, <laughs> been, she, she would have had a clear direction there, I think. And now she won't get to, to show whatever oh, that. Oh, been. next week, is that the 10th episode or? Yeah. Because that's another um, flash sale. Oh, I wonder if it's going to be both looks. That's the last looks. one. I wonder if it's going to be both looks or just like one look, uh, uh, the yeah. look on the model or the look on the designer. Yeah. Who knows? I don't know. But that's the last one, so. Yeah. Yeah. I and, wish that this one would have been a good flash sale. I, I, I might have bought those. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest. I, I, I wouldn't have worn any of those. Not because they weren't good, but because they're not my. Oh, you I'm, not, I'm not Elton John level bling. Uh, yeah, I guess they call it the blues or whatever outfit. I think you look cute. In <laughs> <laughs> Although Tessa, actually, I think Tessa is as loud as I, I would normally go. With oh, okay. okay. So I, I, I work with her on my Elton John outfit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thank you, Susan, for joining me uh, once again. And thank you, everyone, for watching us uh, talk about this week's episode. Um, if you want to see more of our discussions about Project Runway, uh, you can uh, check out the Project Runway playlist in our YouTube channel. Click like and subscribe to see more. We will be coming back uh, uh, next week to uh, keep discussing Project Runway. We missed last week, but um, we will be back. Um, so uh, with that, uh, thank you everyone and we will see you then.